Ladies and gentlemen, our next presenter is known in this city and Drexel University as Associate Professor in the Digital Media Program in the West Ball College of Media Arts and Design, and also co-founder and co-director of the Drexel Game Design Program at Drexel. However, universally, he is now known as Dr. of Tom, Frank Lee. Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks to Philadelphia Magazine for this invitation to talk to you all, and thank you all for coming. Um, my name is Frank Lee. I'm a game designer and professor at Drexel University. Now, kids aren't particularly impressed by the fact that I'm a professor, but their mind is blown by the fact that I teach game design. I was born in South Korea in 1969. I remember when I was young, I used to play with my friends in the neighborhood, running around outside. We used to play tag, hide and go seek, or just chase each other um, out and throughout the streets. In 1980, when I was 10, with my family, I immigrated to the United States. And just as I did in Korea, I would play with my friends in the neighborhood, outside, running around. Now, here we are in 2013. In thinking back, I, what I treasure from those moments are one, the close social interaction that I had with my friends, two, the close physical interaction that I had with my friends, and three, the close ties that I felt with my city. That is, if you're running all over the neighborhood along the streets, you get to know and love your city. Now, here we are in 2013. But I think we have lost many of those things. Technology has driven us more towards isolation. It may have started when we first put our headphones on with a Walkman, but it certainly continues to now when we meet our friends for coffee, when we sit in isolation looking at our cell phones, texting, or checking posts on Facebook or Twitter. We're losing the close social interaction, the close physical interaction, and the close ties to each other and our, to our city and our neighborhood. Does it have to be this way? My answer is no. Technology doesn't have to bring isolation. It's just a medium. Games are just a medium. We can use technology and games to create and encourage close ties, close social interaction, close physical interaction, and close ties to our city. I would like to bring back play into our lives that sometimes we lose as we grow up. Let me demonstrate what I mean by describing number of projects, three projects, past, current, and future. The first project is the game Sierra Center Pong, or Pong on the Sierra Center, which hopefully some of you were at or have heard of. Pong is a beloved icon in gaming as the very first successful commercial video game. And it certainly holds a, a special place in my heart as the very first video game that I played when I was young on the very first console, the Atari 2600, that I owned. My idea was simple. Take Pong from the small 10 to 20 inch screen that we used to play and blow that up. Create a Pong that's 29 story tall on a skyscraper. The idea was simple, but it took five years to make. Much of that time basically stalking one of our sponsors, uh, Brandywine Realty Trust, that owns the building. But I'm not here to talk about the technical or other hurdles along the way. What I want to share with you is my goal for the project, which wasn't just to make the world's biggest Pong, which was kind of cool in itself as, anyway, but that wasn't the goal. I wanted to create a singular shared experience, a social experience in the city of Philadelphia for that single slice in time, for that single moment in time. The shared experience isn't just between the two people playing Pong, but it is also with the hundreds of people that were watching the people play Pong and the thousands of people around the city that were watching the two people play Pong. We were all sharing in that social experience in that moment in time. Let me show you 
what it actually looked like. Thank you. Um, so Pong was part of the, the kickoff for the Philly Tech Week of this year in 2012, back in April. Pong was played at the Art Museum overlooking the north side of the Sears Center building, where the game was displayed. However, if you search online, what really sort of drew me was the fact that you will see video uploads from people from University City, scarily enough, driving along I-76, walking along the Schuylkill River and the Fairmount Park area as well, a Fairmount District. We were, at that moment in time, we were all sharing in this singular social experience, and that was what I was hoping to achieve, and that was what I was hoping to get. The next game that I like to describe is a game that I like to call Conquest. This is based on a beloved game among geeks about my age, uh, called Netrek. I played this game at Berkeley during the early 90s when I was a college student. It was a unique game in that it was a large multiplayer game during the 90s. The game existed mostly, if not only, at universities, mostly because it required a lot of smart and technical young people with access to lots of computing resources with lots of free time in their hands. As the name might suggest, it is based on the Star Trek universe. You are placed in a team, for example, human, Klingon, or Romulan, and the goal is to take over the universe as shown on the right. The circles represent planets. In the game, you control a ship. You pick up army units from your planet and drop them off on the enemy planet, thus taking them over. As shown on the screen on the left, you can also have dogfights with other players. You can use phasers and photon torpedoes, and for Star Trek geeks, that should be very familiar, for offense and shields and cloaking device for defense. This is how I'm reimagining that game. I envision this game to be played outside using your GPS-enabled cell phones, where buildings become planets and you are the ship. For example, people are divided into multiple teams, just as in that track, you pick up army units from your own planet slash building and run over to the enemy planet building, thus taking them over. I also envision dogfights among players meeting out in the streets with offensive and defensive capabilities. So imagine University City or the entire city of Philadelphia becoming a game with hundreds if not thousands of people playing at once. That's the vision of this game. My goal for this game, again, is to create a close social and physical interaction. It's meant to be played outside, meant to be played with other people, and bring us closer to the city as we run across the different streets and buildings. And the third final project I'll talk about is a game that I call Philly Wide Tetris. My goal for the Sierra Palm project was to unite people in the city of Philadelphia through a shared social experience. However, the problem with Serpong Project was that it only included half of the city, from the northwest to the northeast, because it was only visible on one side. So the Philly Wide Tetris is an attempt to address that issue for next year's Philly Tech Week. I plan to use both north and south side of the Sears Center building to create a two-player competitive Tetris. For example, one player will be at the art museum, and the other player will be at the corner of 30th and Market. 
each playing their own game of Tetris. However, as each player clears rows, they build up energy. They can be used offensively or defensively. For example, you might be able to stop the other player's ability to rotate for a moment or force the other player to drop their piece. One question that I get is how Tetris would actually look on the Sierra Center. We built a prototype of Tetris and gave a quick demo during this year's Fully Tech Week, which I would like to show. So, unfortunately, that was me playing that horrible one. Um, so if you actually come to Philly Tech Week next year you, and you get to play me, there's a good chance that you'll actually win. But one thing that I'd like to point out both this video and the previous Pong video is not so much that it's, I mean, it's cool that it's on a skyscraper, but the fact of the shared experience that you heard on the video, everyone sort of essentially getting excited at the same time and getting let down at the same time. And this, I hope and I feel, is replicated not just among the players, but people watching the game around them and people in the entire city as well. So these are some of the projects that I'm working on, but not all of them. Other games not directly related to the theme of, of today's talk include games for kids with autism, games to teach kids arithmetic, and games to teach kids about bullying. We are also we also have purely fun games in works as well, include a game about collecti uh, excuse me, collecting cats floating in outer space with a ball of yarn, and a game about a drawn girl escaping her artist who is trying to erase her. If you're interested in finding out more about these games, or especially if you're interested in sponsoring any of these games and my work, please feel free to contact me. Thank you very much. <laughs>